about this last week when I missed a call by two hours. Uh, <laughs> so the submission for the community leadership summit that was accepted. Uh, oh, it was it? it? It was. It was accepted. So uh, they put me on. They put me as a speaker for now. Uh, okay. I mean, there's a possibility that Ildico will will uh, could make it to the U.S. that week. Uh, I guess well, yeah, we'll. I mean, I'm 99.9 percent .9 sure that I'll be there. So we'll, if both of us are there, I guess we'll fight out who gets to speak for 15 minutes. But is it one five minutes? It's yeah, short. one five. It's short. It's a short keynote. I mean, that's it's it's almost like a lightning round type of keynote, and then okay. most of them it's like on conference. Okay. Um, uh, so right on. yeah, so I just posted the link to the event and. Uh, uh, it, yeah, at least cool. they have like a speaker sort of posted there. Okay, cool. Good job. Uh, yeah. Danny, I know that you had submitted one too. Had you heard? Yep, but I have not received any uh, answers, I guess. Okay. Yeah. To be determined still. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, cool. And I think... Um, Maybe still on this on this topic, uh, open source North America submissions are due at the end of the month, I think. Yeah. Towards the end of April. So obviously we'll be submitting something to that. So it's on my radar. I haven't <laughs> I haven't officially done anything yet because uh, the end of the month seems like forever away <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> uh, that's it for me. I was intending to send something, but. It's just still a bit long for me. Yeah, <laughs> three weeks, that's forever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, cool. Um, I don't know, and then I don't know if there's any other things that we're submitting to. Do we know any others? I mean, we have the stuff that we're doing at the university prior to Open Source Summit North America. Mm. But I think that's still, I think that's a little out of band with an official conference submission date. So what the structure looks like. Do we have any details on the OSS con that we want to host at the Open Source Summit North America? Is that the one that's at the university? Yeah. Like what location, what day, what time, Didn't something like that. Isn't, I think we're, aren't we at the University of British Columbia? Okay. So Sean knows folks, isn't that right, Jesus, UBC? Yeah, I think so. It was it was seen looking for the place, but I think it is. Yep. And he said he had confirmation that we can I wanted to put it on our website slash wiki. Yeah, I mean it'd be good if Sean can even on the mailing list send a confirmation on like dates and and yeah. like location. I think that would be good good to have. I still have, I still have to announce in the mailing list the organizing committee. That's something that they plan to do this week. And uh, I think that once we are, let's say, formally organized, we can start to make uh, public all of this, including location and timing and, and so on, yeah. and put uh, an open call for contributions. Cool. Right on. Yeah, right, exactly. The open call for submissions for folks to participate in that. OK, yeah. cool. Uh, all right, I'll ping Sean. That's on my to-do list. I had a question now that Danielle is on the line. The diversity and inclusion work group? Yeah. Oh, Daniel. This was for Danielle yeah, in Spain. Hi, hi, Daniel. German, other Daniel. Yeah, I guess that the problem is that we are too many. <laughs> too many Daniels. <laughs> you can change the uh, name. We're moving into that. So, um, the the website is incorrect because it says that it's at the University of Vancouver and there is no such university. Okay, we will. I think it's UBC, so we'll fix that. It must be UBC. Um, it's, yeah. it's the closest university. Now, uh, the university is probably around uh, one hour away from the conference center, if I remember correctly. UBC is? Okay. Yeah. So it's not, it's not close to um, where uh, the conference is going to be. Okay. Well, I, I, understood, I understood saying that it was not that far away. I mean, if it is one hour away, maybe we, we should consider. Well, you have to take the bus to get there. And um, so it's not close by. 
And uh, it might be good to use, uh, um, maybe, maybe I'm mistaken. Let me actually see where it is. So, uh, it's open source. What's the name of the main event? Open source. Open source no. summit. OSS NA. Sorry. Okay, summit 2018. Yeah, I mean, by by Lyft or Uber, I don't think it'll take a full hour. Uh, I mean, it's oh, really well, so I guess it depends what you use, right? So yeah. I've never used yeah. Uber, Uber in my life, so. Okay. Yeah, I I yeah, I completely understand if it's a bus, it, it would take longer, but yeah, I don't think it's yeah. that far. I mean, it's been a long uh, while since I've been to UBC from downtown Vancouver, but. Yeah. So once you're in the bus, it's around twenty-five minutes, thirty minutes. It's just. The fact yeah. of getting to the bus, waiting for the bus, and all of that. Right. And uh, so, where is it? So, Daniel, where did you see the wrong university on the website? Um, in, in the minutes of last week. Oh, minutes last week. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, so, that's where I read the, the, the name. And uh, actually, I cannot even get the place where it's supposed to be. Hey, okay. While you're looking that up, hey, hey, would everybody yeah. for this um for this kind of pre-conference or whatever the on conference that we'd see, what would you all think of having um kind of a set of talks dedicated to the software, and maybe a set of excuse me a set of talks that might be uh, more about the, the implications of metrics or research that's being done around metrics. It's not just Focus solely on the software, kind of like a two-track thing. We have or in a not software. There may be something to inviting researchers who are exploring this space to talk about the work that they're doing. Um, Somebody getting married, or I know I hear that church bell too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this will be recorded for posterity's sake, by the way. <laughs> so, um, before uh, just just quickly, uh, so the bus uh, distance according to Google is forty nine minutes. Every 15 minutes. Okay. That gives you an idea. So um, the conference at the, at, the, at the convention center, so that's um, right next to the water in the downtown. The university was just on the other side. And um, so it will not be straightforward to go from one to the other. So <clears throat> that should be taken into account. Yeah, I mean, but we're doing the event before the open source summit, right? Okay. So I, I don't think people necessarily be going back and forth. Like if people are okay. staying near the convention center, they just need to make a long, like a bus ride, I guess, in the morning and in the afternoon. But I, I don't know if That's people right. should be going back and forth during the day. So uh, from, from my European perspective, like one hour of commuting is maybe too much. It's like being in a different town. But if you find it as a table, uh, I mean, most of the people I think are going to come from the States or Canada. So if you find that as a table, that's fine with me. I think it's what we have to go with. I mean, we have to find facilities near Vancouver. And if Sean has essentially free facilities at UBC, yeah. I mean. I Even when we were at Boston, it took almost that time to get from the city center to the university. So in Brussels, I think so. it's fine. Personally, I think it's totally fine. Okay, okay, you know better. Yeah, I think it's fine. I think it's just very efficient. So, um, going back to your question about the the, the, the presentations, um, yeah. So, one of one of the main challenges, and 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 I see it on that side, and I have talked to Jesus about this is. Um, the biggest problem that I see so far is how to convert this work into papers that I can publish. And, and I think that the, the biggest challenge is that a lot of this, a lot of this, a lot of the work in metrics has been done for the last 10 or 15 years. So where are we innovative with respect to what has been done in the past? 
And uh, so there are papers that can describe the efforts that they're being done. But I think the biggest challenge is really um, how to demonstrate that the metrics really measure what they're supposed to measure. Yep. And they can be an indicator of whatever they need to be. And I think that's a, that's a very tricky situation and a very difficult one to uh, properly um, implement and research. I, I mean, I agree. I think part of what you what we can look at uh, from a research perspective is uh, what do the metrics mean in practice? I think we can talk a lot about you know, what are the metrics we'd like to see, uh, but how they live in the world, I think, is another story that hasn't really been told. So to me, that's an area of, of interest. Um, how they actually yeah, affect... I, yeah, go ahead. So, sorry, I, I, I had a big conversation with Sean um, last year when we were in Japan, and, um, and I said that one of the things is, is very easy to measure. You can measure everything, right? All you have to do is create your ruler and just put notches on it, and then you can measure. Yeah. Uh, it's very difficult is to demonstrate the, use, the, the, the usefulness of a particular metric. Yeah. And um, so I think that that's, uh, part, well, that's what I feel one of the biggest challenges of whatever uh, we create. What if we spent time in Vancouver talking about this? What are the research yeah, avenues? I think it's a good idea. Okay, I like that idea. Um, okay. But in any case... And of course, I think that... Uh, so, sorry, go ahead, Jesus. No, I yes, was going to say that in the, most of the people uh, interested in chaos are not academics. I'm not talking about the people doing the stuff, but about the people doing the interested in the results of chaos. So, um, I mean, this topic is interesting for all of us. I mean, for, for, for you and for Daniel and for me, uh, but I'm not sure if it is interesting for the chaos community at large. And, and this really becomes the biggest um, um, challenge with respect to the participation of some of us, because um, there, are the, there are the organizations that will benefit from this. So, Viterhia, I suspect, um, it would be one of the beneficiaries because you're going to demonstrate uh, the, the usefulness of those metrics and then um, improve your business around that. And uh, when you put your hat of researcher, um, I think that's a little bit different. And, um, but I don't sell papers to the practitioners. I sell papers to my colleagues. So, and, um, and until I have the, so, and, and if I don't have the papers, then um, my time is, 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 is not well spent. Basically, uh, it's with respect to the motivations and the outcomes. And to, me, these, to me, these can stay very parallel, the academic and the practitioner side of the world. So, I mean, as I, don't, I don't deny that. I, I totally agree. And, uh, but so far, I don't see the research that I can do. And that's, that's a little bit of uh, what bothers me. So, yeah, let, so me, let, me, let me translate that into another language. From the academic point of view, it's very difficult to justify the time spent in this because you cannot publish papers that are going to help you to improve your curriculum. And that's how that happens to me as well. So, uh, every time I have to make a decision of uh, spending the time writing the software, dealing with uh, how to use it and stuff like that, or writing papers. And in some cases, both things can be aligned. But that's very rare. Usually, you you need to choose, and I completely agree with you, Daniel. That's a problem mm -hmm. for the participation yeah, no. of academics and something like this. But but I don't I don't I don't see a way out. I mean, I've been living like that for maybe ten years, and uh, uh, I think my brain is split between what may be of interest to the industry, what should be interesting to the academia. Uh, unfortunately, because I think things interesting to the industry should be also interesting to the academia, but I've learned that's not the case usually. Or, or maybe you need to present it in, in so many, in, in, in a way which is so different that really it means doing it twice. And, and in some cases, yeah, yeah, you, can, you can align everything, but that's, that's not easy. To, uh, to me, oftentimes, it's, it's just an issue of language. So the language that I use in an academic paper 
as, as you know, is quite different than the language that I would use in a presentation that I would make at, say, Open Source Summit North America. Um, but, but to me, they still, they're really parallel with one another. If I'm exploring how, how metrics are used to derive value, I mean, to me, that's a very important academic question as to how these things live in the world. And it's also, as I think you were pointing out, Daniel, a very important applied question as well as to what are the cases by which these metrics live in the world. And to me, I, the effort just comes from setting the language straight for the different audiences. I don't know. So in some cases, we have found, we are finding that industrial track venues and stuff like that, they, they appreciate the kind of things that we do with the industry. But in some other cases, I mean, you, you can try to understand the whole community, for instance, and do a very good study of them with the community itself or the industries participating in it, appreciate it. But when you come to an academic venue, usually uh, the, 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 the complaint is, well, we don't know if this is general enough for being a and I understand that concern because I have it with many people that are public as well. Finding the middle ground, I agree with you, Matt, is in part about um, a model of um, uh, the correct wording and the correct terms and so on. But there is another thing which is more related to the final ends of what you are doing, which is a bit different between trying to understand something and solve a specific problem that an industry may have and converting that into a, let's say, a kind of a theoretical model that can be tested in several yeah. projects and uh, can be uh, really useful for a paper. And um, again, the, the middle ground. So, I, I mean, it's not like black and white, but, but it's difficult. So I agree with Anil in that. Well, I would honestly, if we have an opportunity to talk about this issue, I think it would be beneficial to uh, the academic side of things. And I think it's very important that we continue to align the academic findings and the work that people are doing with the work of the chaos project. So to me, it, I would love to keep these two conversations, which I think are quite close. I, I think I'd like to keep them aligned the best that we can. And if we can spend time in Vancouver doing that, and I agree with you, Jesus, maybe it's not a main track kind of thing, right? But if we can spend time talking about what the research opportunities are or how to, how to keep practice and research aligned. This is something that we should all be cognizant, cognizant of. Uh, I, I would love to have that conversation. I don't know. Maybe we could propose a panel on this with uh, academics like we all and all other people from the industry and try to discuss the different perspectives I, of this. I would love that. I think that sounds extremely productive, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I guess um, um, uh, go ahead. Sorry. Yep. Yeah, uh, it's to make them aware that um, yeah. we need to get money to do research. The money yeah. that we'll be, that we'll be investing traveling or or doing things or having students working on any of this has to come from somewhere, yeah. and that's usually the usage funds. So that means that one way or another it has to translate into papers. Yep. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. Ray, did you have a comment? Yeah, no, I mean, I was, I was just, um, I mean, pr pretty much like echoing what I think what you said, Matt. And I mean, I'm, I guess I'm coming more from a practitioner side, but I mean, if this is a parallel track and I mean, I don't see a harm in having it, like interested people will show up, right? And I think it's important to have that conversation. And I mean, we wanted to have researchers as part of the project for a reason, right? So mm -hmm. I think being inclusive, and I mean, if, if people more on the pra pra you know, practitioner side of things aren't interested, I mean, they won't show up. I mean, but I don't think there's any harm in having a, having a session. I personally would be interested because I like cool. to get a different perspective. So, but cool. yeah. Okay, let's, cool. Let's yeah. propose the panel and, yeah. and, and see what happens. Yeah. So the idea is to propose the panel at Open Source Summit North America, not within the chaos pond. I mean, we could do both, but the, for me, the interesting venue is the other one. I mean, for the Open Summit South America, North America. Because the, there is where, if you want to discuss this with people in the industry, that's really where they are. 
In chaos, I think that we already have a mixture of both profiles. And the main problem in chaos, my, my personal problem at this is it's difficult to, to find the relationship between my, my two brains, the industrial one and the academic one. Uh, but presenting the problem to the industry, uh, that's more like doing it in the, in the open source summit. That's my impression. But we could do both. I mean, we could propose a panel for open source summit and see what happens. And depending on the contributions we have, we can also have some slot, maybe more focused specifically on chaos and how to, uh, how to try to, to, to make chaos inclusive both for, to academia and to industry. Uh, and that would, could be mainly mostly like a, a community discussion, while the other for open source summit could be more like a, a panel. I agree. That would be fantastic. Daniel, yeah. uh, are you saying something? Oops. Well, I, I muted him because we were getting a lot of feedback, but I'm going to unmute him. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right, cool. These are great, great ideas. Good things to work from. Uh, I guess one of the things I was Asking, then we kind of went over here, was for Danielle in Spain, uh, the DNI work group, kind of how we can continue to help in that regard or things that you're doing? Oh, yeah. Um, um, by the way, a really interesting conversation, uh, the one we had before. Um, so um, basically, the last, the last things we've been working on was to try to polish the, the five goals we have in the working group. Um, we are, uh, well, Emma is now on board, Emma from Mozilla Foundation. So we are all trying to, to have some, um, uh, minimum and common set of goals to start working with, uh, the working group. Um, okay. the work so far is that we, uh, are now defining the areas of analysis for the first of the goals which is basically defining the goal question metric for specifically the, work, the working group. So this is where we are. Okay, that's awesome. Did you go to the Mozilla, did anybody go to the Mozilla DNI talk last week? I was there. Thursday, yeah. Thursday maybe? Wednesday? Thursday. One of those days. Um, can, can, can you comment on that, uh, Georg, please? Well, I'm a... Uh, I'm not about, uh, about the work group and she invited others and she asked uh, the people on the call if they had any input um, as to what they want to see or what they would like the work group to focus on. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there was no comments uh, from the community. So she presented it, but there was nothing coming back from the from the uh, audience in terms of what the, the audience what sh the audience would like to work on what the audience would like the work group to focus on or to see the work group do okay or the work um, group being the chaos work the group? work chaos work okay, group. okay okay yeah and emma had also asked um how diversity and inclusion is currently being used in open source projects or by the participants on the call and uh, none of them replied to that. So we didn't get any feedback. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, and, and well, basically the, the next week on the 18th at 5 p.m. Central European time, we are having the next uh, diversity and inclusion meeting. Uh, if any of the meeting right now would like to be involved, I guess we have uh, the link. I mean, it's going to be this Zoom uh, meeting, so you are more than welcome to, to join. The 18th? 1-8? Oh. Yeah. yeah. At 5 CET? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is that right? Okay, cool. Yeah. I just put it in the chat. Okay, cool. Uh, all right. On this same fixed channel that we have. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, by the way, for the channel. Oh, sure. <laughs> Okay, cool. Oh, All right, you already did it. All right, cool.
Uh, all right. I, I guess one of the things I'll be there, but uh, that I'll kind of bring up is continuing to maintain the alignment between what's going on with the DNI repository over in the metric, and then the work that will be done in the DNI work group. I think this has come up a number of times that important to make sure that we don't have several instances of the same thing over, all over the place, not all over the place, but in two different places, is to just reduce confusion. So the, the, the figuring out a way that we can stay in alignment or indicate that that the metrics committee is the current stable version and the work group is the evolving version and that work group releases to the stable I, I, something without getting overly complicated. I don't know what the right answer is here. Hmm. That we don't have that's a goal, goal question GQM, goal question method pages, one sitting in the metrics committee and one sitting in the work group. That's all. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, the point here is that we are still, uh, we have kind of started from scratch in terms of uh, checking that everyone feels comfortable with the goals defined in the working group. So uh, we have not even defined the next questions. So we are still defining those. So basically once we are producing this, we'll try to move things to, okay. um, to the other. But I think over on the metric side, I will totally defer to what comes up out of the work group, just so I know what, what you want. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. And then the other is in the DNI work group, making sure that folks from, I know that you're there, but folks from the software side are also listening to that conversation so that we can, as we come up with the working set of things that we can look at via trace data from a mm -hmm. DNI perspective, the, the the software side is able to implement those as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah with, with that respect, that's a good question. I'm not aware of some advances because he, he wanted to have uh, gender as a new kind of layer, right? But I, I'm not aware of advances. Do you know something? I don't. So I'll, I'll ping Sean mm -hmm. on that because it would be nice to keep him looped in on that as well. Mm. Okay. Um, and I'm typing it. Okay, cool. Because I think that was the one of the main premise, premises. Am I? Premises behind the work groups was that these are the as you had brought up, I think a while ago, Danielle. That these are the ones that can really create this awesome bridge between the metrics and the software. But these are actually tractable things. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So that's great. Yeah. So just continuing to foster that. Cool. Um, I still swear I had something else to say, but I, I still can't remember it. <laughs> I know nobody else can read my mind. So <laughs> I can say something on the website. Kevin, Nicole, and I met to discuss the structure of the website. And we are thinking about where to put information right now. When you go to the website repository, there's a working um, Google Doc that we're working in to define this. and. Ray, we will come um, with the proposal to you to ask that the structure of the menu be changed because right now we don't have the capabilities to do that. Yeah, I mean, there. I've been following up with our IT folks. There's been uh, like the changes in like IT staff, so I'm I'm trying to get the right person to introduce you you guys so that we can like migrate everything over to GitHub, but. So we have yeah. moved away from migrating everything to GitHub because oh, okay. the WordPress site allows us to uh, pull content from GitHub so we can maintain the content within GitHub. Right. Um, but then use the WordPress site as oh, okay. the, as the <laughs> is the ability to change the menu structure or okay. at um, in, in the IT to change it for us, since right now we can't do it. Okay, yeah, just just let me know, and then I'll forward it to the right folks. Then, so. Awesome, thank you. All right, thanks. I remembered my question. It's for you, Ray. Yep. So, um, is there is it possible that we could ever make a small video about the Chaos Project 
via the Linux Foundation. That would be a kind of a professional looking video. If we could come up with the text or the copy, whatever you call it. Uh -huh. for even just like a three or four minute overview of the project. Yeah, I mean, that's like a question. So is this just an like overview? Like, a, is it mostly like a somebody presenting an overview of, of, of chaos? Or what, what kind of video are, yeah. are you thinking yeah. of? Exactly. That's it. I always feel like when I do it, it just, it sounds like, like a, I don't know, it sounds like me. Okay. <laughs> it sounds <like> professional. <laughs> so I don't know if there's, if the Linux Foundation has anybody or any group we have somebody here at the university yeah who i could work with but i just thought i'd ask yeah i mean there's there's a group of people uh i mean for other projects that i've i've been involved in we a lot of times we hired like an external okay uh, like a videographer but i mean those projects had like a separate budget like a marketing okay. budget as an example to pay for those well um, if it's not if it's not part of yeah what's on at the Linux Foundation. Then, like I said, I, there's there's a person here who does this professionally. Okay. If, yeah. if I can, I'll do it that route. Okay. okay cool. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Uh, what else? Anybody else? Topics for today? Yeah, I have just a minute comment. Uh, in the in Grumar Lab, we're starting to look at. Um, uh, the Garrett data. Uh, Ray, I know you're, that you are specifically interested in this. Uh, so the idea is to go through the data that you can extract from Garrett and try to find out the kind of information that is useful. Because right now, Grimoire Lab is not getting information about, for instance, uh, the votes or who is reviewing and stuff like that. It's only getting information about who starts the code review. So if anybody wants to be involved, I'm starting to write some uh, scripts and some of them are already in the Grimoire Lab tutorial, but I'm starting basically to explore the information, how to capture it and so on. And the next step would be how to visualize it. Danny was also doing a work in this based on the uh, eventized uh, indexes, which basically means converting everything happening in Gary to an event, like uh, when somebody reviews is an event, for instance, so that then you can query the database with all of that information. So the idea is basically to do the same and do it in a way that we can do something similar to GitHub uh, pull requests later. So if, if some of you want to join, I'm, I'm more than happy of uh, working cool. with you. That's nice. Have, cool. you, um, have you talked with Sean too about um, connecting, I, I know that he, the new GH data slash auger project, connecting that principle, have you all, Continue that conversation. I was, I was in the webinar uh, this afternoon, well, my afternoon, and uh, yeah, he was commenting on how easy it is to pull new metrics. Okay. The main thing is that for this, he would be needing a new uh, a data source. If I mean, if, if he starts with Garrett, but he was again commenting on how to include uh, Percival as okay. another, with another data source. And I think that could be the, the easiest path for doing that. In any case, in the context of this working group that we decided to start on the on the metrics, uh, we also need to have something similar, so. Okay. Okay, because to me that seems to be still the most sensible, sensible yeah, thing for everyone. Yep. All right, cool. Anybody else? Comments? On the... Uh, governance uh, repository, I create a pull request on the code of conduct that I would like the governing board to review and approve. It's the changes we've talked about before of making the code of conduct team definition more inclusive and allowing uh, less specified collection of people and changing the number to an uneven number so that we always have a breaking, a tie breaking vote. Yeah. And I would like this change to be approved before we then elect the team so that we don't have to change the team constellation again. Uh, do you for that? I can post a link to that, yes. 
So basically, you have a zero root slip and you aggregate. Alrighty. Thanks for working on that. Yep, no worries. Alrighty. Uh, any other burning issues for people? These are great. Yeah. Just, yeah. just a comment. Uh, and this is kind of a, uh, of a big question. But um, I was looking for. Um, students in i mean students in terms of the outreach and google summer of code uh, the outreach people have a great uh, website so basically you can track you can list they have a list of people and mentors and students and so on but i for some reason i cannot find a similar list for google summer of code so uh, for the people involved perhaps in openstack or in, in somehow related is there a place where I can look for such list of students? You know that we are now projects. We are now focusing on OpenStack, trying to understand mentorship uh, in OpenStack in this specific case. So I have the list of outreach students. I do not have the list of OpenStack Google Summer of Code students, at least for previous years. So um, it's uh, just in case you have some ideas. I don't know. So Google Summer of Code students per project, right? Yeah, exactly. So in case you maybe you you know the link, like and it's here, all the information is there. But uh, I don't know if there is such a list. I know it's, some I mean, projects track yeah. their previous Google Summer of Code students on their own website, but I don't hmm. know the actual Google Summer of Code list. I mean, I would be concerned about the privacy issue if somebody were to create a list like that, right? Um, could be, I don't know. Well, basically the information is public. So if you go to wikipenstack.org slash wiki Google Summer of Code 2014, there's a, an open list of people uh, willing to participate. But yeah, I mean, I understand your point, right? Yeah. Yeah, it may just might be something that you need to ask like permission from like both the mentors and like students. Um, yeah, it might just be a project by project kind of thing. Yeah. All right, good question. Don't know the answer. Sorry. Okay, no worries. I don't know the list either. I have never heard of such a thing. Hmm. What is that? Uh, just an example, that's the best I have in terms of list of people. So those were basically students saying, hey, I want to participate here. That's all. Student applicate. Oh, they list everybody that even applied. Well, we have something similar on the, our repo where we asked students to self-list them. So, mm. Yeah, list themselves. Um, well, I actually think about getting rid of that list after we select because it's I don't see the value in keeping this list. What hmm. is the value of such a list? Well, well basically what uh, the, the study we are trying to carry on is uh, to understand, uh, let's say, mentorship. And for this, we are analyzing outreach and Google Summer of Code. So for outreach, we have some lists of people and the point is to understand the retention of those developers through time if they have moved from this project in OpenStack to another project, and uh, uh, let's say interaction with other people, with the community, and so on. So basically trying to understand what mentorship uh, actually means from a quantitative perspective, and in, at the very end, try to produce some metrics on this. Um, that's all, so the question was, if you have such list, or some idea of how to retrieve that data would be good. No, that's all. No okay. worries. But thank you. It makes sense. OK. Uh, any other folks? Have you looked at the paper that we published in ICSM last year with respect to Google Summer of Code? Yep, I saw that. And, uh, uh, because, um, oh, what we did was to try to measure um, whether the students stick around or not. And uh, so that might give you some ideas if you haven't seen it. Mm. Thanks for the, the list. Daniel? 
You shared uh, sorry, it. Sorry, You shared um, it maybe to the mentors, maybe? Uh, yeah, I sent it. I sent it to the mentors, and uh, okay. we also have a survey that asks students explicitly what is what they want, and um, and we are going to attach that to the to the paper to send it to empirical software engineering. So we're just finishing that in, in these days. But essentially, okay. the big is that many of them what they want is just the money. Mm -hmm. The money corrupts. I can. Um... I'll track down that paper and send it your way, Danielle. Yeah, I, I can send I can send it to the mail list again, and um, yeah. and I think that the other one that um, you will also find interesting, uh, Danny, is um, mm -hmm. post that we have of the survey on um, fairness. Um, maybe uh, uh, Gregorio already shared that with you. Uh, fairness mm -hmm. and code. I think that fairness is going to be an interesting aspect to measure with respect to metrics. Mm -hmm, definitely. I think that Gregorio shared one of those, or maybe that one with me. Yeah, so that's the one that we, we got accepted at Exit this year. Okay. Can you send that to the list again, Daniel? Sorry, say it again? Can you send that paper to the list again? Um, yeah, I'll send, I'll send both papers, um, the reference to both. I have them on, on, on uh, my repository, so I can provide the link so people can download them if they want. That'd be great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. Uh, going once, going twice. Issues, Ryan. If not, till the re yeah. Okay. All right. Well, then uh, till next week. Uh, oh, and we'll start getting some of these videos up onto our Chaos channel as well. So, All right. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.